So regarding LinkedIn, what we need to do is we need to decide, uh, as always, we have the personal and we have the professional profiles. So LinkedIn, LinkedIn personal profile and and or business page. You can have uh, both of those. <coughs> you can have both of these, a personal profile and or a business page. As when we talked about Facebook, it's very easy to accidentally create a business account onto the personal one. When you go to LinkedIn to create a brand new account, it'll say fill in all this information. You may fill it in as your business, but you don't want that. LinkedIn is asking you to create a personal account. Once we have the personal account, we can create the business account, the business page. We do need the personal one in order to use the business one. But as I said with Facebook, you don't need to use the personal one. As I said with Google+, Plus, you don't need to use the personal, personal one. You don't have to put your high school and uh, your hobbies and all of that. But you need some login account to be able to then manage the business one. However, I will say with LinkedIn, because this is the professional social network, you have to decide. Decide. Will you use LinkedIn only as a business or also as a person? And the reason I say that is there's many use case scenarios. Let's say I'm a realtor. Okay, I'm a realtor and I'm part of a company, you know, goldenstaterealty.com. I'm part of a real estate company and I want to get clients to sell them a house or help sell their house, get them to buy a house or to sell their house. So I need to decide, am I going to be promoting the business, Golden <coughs> State Realtors, or am I also going to be promoting Victor Campos, the realtor? I might do both. That's perfectly fine. So if it's my own personal company, and I'm the only person in the company, no one needs to know it's a one-man company, it's a company, but am I going to promote only the company or also myself? You're going to need to decide that. I would recommend, depending on your business, probably both. Set up and use, as we will see how, the personal <coughs> profile in terms of that's also going to get me a client. That's also going to get me a job. That's also going to make me a sale, in addition to the business page, which is going to get me a job, which is going to get me a sale, which is going to get me a client. You have double the power here, not just the business page, but a personal profile. Because your personal profile could also be your promotion tool, showing Victor Campos has this degree, has this experience, has made these projects, has these skills, hire him to sell your house. In addition to Golden State Realty Company has a face has a LinkedIn presence, I'm going to hire them to sell my house. I would say it may be useful to also focus on the personal profile as well as the business page to market, <coughs> promote advertise your business, your business or brand, or product. Let's say I am part of one of these, uh, what do we call them, the modern term, multi-level multi, multi -level marketing companies, um, where I am selling a product, and I'm going to sell the product to five people, and then they're going to recruit five more people, and I'm reaching multi-levels of, of marketing. So I'm selling the main company product, let's say, you know, uh, healthy, sustainable <coughs> cosmetics. And I'm going to be promoting the main company, healthysustainablecosmetics.com. But I need to promote myself too because I'm the one actually doing the legwork to sell those products. That's why it would be useful to have and fill out completely and use 
both types of pages. It'll make sense when we do it here. That's the general concept. You have both personal and business. I would recommend, depending on your business, both. The, re the way it wouldn't quite work is, let's say, you know, I'm part of a company and I'm one, one cog in the company and it doesn't matter too much that my name is out there it's the company itself that needs to be promoted so I wouldn't be using my personal one too much that might be a conflict of interest with the main company let's go over to your web browser and we'll go to <coughs> linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos. So I'm going to show you examples of both. This is the personal one. This is of a person. This is my LinkedIn here. Uh, LinkedIn. we go. If it doesn't show it to you right away, let's try to put the address in again. It shouldn't let you see it, hopefully. But uh, this is an example of a personal account, and in my case, the reason that I might focus on the personal and the business account is because I, the person, also I'm going to use myself to get hired to get my company more clients for what we do. The web design, the social media, um, you know, any of those concepts. So I will use myself as a promotional tool. Notice I have here a web address of LinkedIn that is short and memorable. The default is that a LinkedIn address is most likely something like when you first set it up, Victor Campos dash gibberish. That's the default that everyone gets. I'll show you how to claim the short memorable name. It's not that obvious. Most likely you do want that short memorable name. You want simply Victor Campos, not Victor dash Campos dash 9928. <coughs> so let's see how to do that. Because then that could go on a business card a lot easier. It looks more professional. It's easier to remember and to to distribute. But we'll look then at the at, a, at the details of an account, but we're seeing then the the name and the uh, job title and connections and all of that. This is basically resumes 2.0. This is the modern resume. Uh, if you're trying to get some job, uh, employers, if you haven't realized it, are looking you up online. Employers are checking out what are you doing online, and if there's em embarrassing stuff online, well, that could be detrimental to you getting that job, perhaps. Uh, so if you've got some profile that's professional, like LinkedIn, that could guide people to your best foot forward to help you get that job. It's got all of this information, education, skills, projects, all that stuff, like a resume. But also what's very useful is you can get recommendations. You can get you can have people write a recommendation on a particular skill. It's like those references in a resume. Here then people can say uh, what, they, what they think about your various skills that you claim that you have. I claim to have these skills here and then I have these people vouching for those, um, for those skills. Now, full disclosure, because it always happens, I, I mentioned this profile just to see an example of a profile that is set up, but I usually do not accept more LinkedIn connections, especially during class with students in a class. It's a conflict. So if you send me a link, LinkedIn request to connect, I probably will not connect uh, because I follow the, uh, the rule here also. If you're going to use personal profiles on LinkedIn, use them selfishly. Not selflessly, selfishly. Don't connect with people on LinkedIn unless it's valuable to you. 
Don't connect to them just because you're friends in the real world. Don't connect to them just because you don't want to make them feel bad that they sent you the message. Connect with people on Facebook selfishly, as in, why does it benefit me if I connect with you? Yes, it sounds very harsh and all of that, but think about the benefit of this. This is not a popularity contest like <coughs> Twitter and Instagram and such that I want to get more and more and more followers. I have 80-something connections there. Those are 80-something people that I think are going to be valuable to me if I need them. If I want to connect with someone that's a realtor, someone that's a banker, someone that uh, has a company of whatever, I don't really connect with friends and family there. I already know their skills or how they are useful to me or not. And again, it sounds very selfish, but yes. For personal profiles, think about it in terms of being selfish. Think about it in being terms, using it in terms of what will I get out of it if I connect with you. You may look really good that you're connecting with a CEO of a company, but me as a CEO of a company connecting with someone that is not another CEO, it's not that valuable to me, perhaps. This is all personal for you to figure out yourself. This is this is my opinion on this, but I think it's a good one to think about for LinkedIn. For every other network, yes, connect with as many as possible. They may give you good leads and uh, reach an audience or make a sale, but with LinkedIn, what is how does it benefit you? So don't get discouraged when I don't accept your request. So then we've got the company is that one again? Company profile, PMD, interactive. On this one, I always forget the address. This one's not as intuitive. Did I ask you a question? Yes. Will the like address be the email account for what? But how could I do the business one? <coughs> how can you do the business one? Yeah. That's what we'll be talking about. Okay, because we have to create a new one, right? If you don't want to do a business one. No. Uh, on top of the one you already have, okay. we're going to add a new one. Not that we create one, we're going to add one okay. in a moment. Okay. Okay. Here's an example then of a company on LinkedIn. Different kind of address, but it's linkedin.com slash company, and then the name of a company. So this is, uh, this is our company on LinkedIn. We can use the LinkedIn company page, just like every other social network, to put updates, to share content and links, to promote ourselves, just like every other network. Everything that we've, that we've talked about on the different networks still applies here, it's just with some variation. But also one of the big reasons why people use a company LinkedIn is to also try to uh, hire people. Uh, to connect with, you know, vendors, distributors and such. Uh, Self-promotion, yes. Let me write that down. Reasons for a LinkedIn business page. <clears throat> Post updates. Share content connect with distributors, vendors, you know, distributors, other people related to your business. If I'm uh, you know, a restaurant, I'm always looking to affordably sell a product, so if I can connect with vendors that give me a better deal, uh, that's a possible way and a reason to, to use LinkedIn business pages. Also, customer service. <coughs> a company may do a search for you on uh, Google or Bing or whatever, and then you appear as a result, but your LinkedIn appears, not your home page. So if people find your LinkedIn, you want to set up the LinkedIn, as we will see how, to show 
the most relevant information, contact information, customer service information. I'm going to go back to the main LinkedIn homepage so you can click the logo at the top left or go to LinkedIn.com. How many of you currently have then a LinkedIn account? Okay. A little bit more than half. Okay, so what we'll do is if you already have an account, you want to log into it. If you don't have an account, I will briefly take a moment to show you about setting up an account. Um, so if you already have an account, you can go back to the home page and log in. I'm going to pretend for a moment that I don't have an account, so I'll go through this process briefly. LinkedIn.com, it's asking for, notice it's asking for filling your information for a person, not as a business. So if I wanted to add my business there, I would do that after I've created a personal account. If I've already got a personal account, I'll show us in a moment how to add a business page to it. Yeah, you might have set up the business one as a person. Which is not what Facebook wants. I mean, not I what LinkedIn wants. Page, yeah. Connected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we might have to look at the break to see how that is. Or you might also go into the while you're waiting. You might go into the help screen and see okay. if you can find how to do that. Either or, it should have the same information. So what I'm going to do then is create an account here. Um, for the moment, I'll make this up. So John Smith. I'll put an email address, password, do you, do you use this, this like your same kind of an email, one standard email, or do you have different emails in your account for something like that, certain things? You can use the same email, but what I do is use a different password. The password that I have to log into LinkedIn is different than the password that I use to log into Facebook, but it's the same email. That's, that's fine to do. That's what I personally do. It's more secure to have a different email and a different password for each network, but it's much more work. So same email, but different password is a little more secure. I'm creating an account. It vaguely knew that I'm in the US and the zip code. Again, if I'm going to use the LinkedIn account, the personal one, as a way to reach more of an audience, it's useful then to set up a zip code here to be able to target a particular location. I can also put in something like San Diego. Oh, it does need a zip code, never mind, so 91921. I'm creating the personal account. It asks if I'm a student or not. If I am, then there's information to fill in there. The point of this, this is not the same as filling in your, your high school information or college information on Facebook to connect, connect with friends and family. This is to be able to find, again, customers or vendors or, or employees. So it would be useful to fill that in. Job title, let's say I'm typing in something like, um, you know, realtor. As I'm starting to type in a starting to type in a job title, it may suggest to me. It depends on your business. I suggest both, but if it doesn't make sense to have a personal one, you, you don't need it. Oh, thank you. Under job titles here, it's suggesting realtor. These are job titles that exist in LinkedIn, and obviously if you already have the account, we can change this a little later once I create my account. But if you're creating an account like me, it's asking for a job title, and I want to get hired to sell or buy houses. So realtor might be a job title. But there's other ones here. Licensed realtor. Maybe people are searching for that. Perhaps anyone can be a realtor, but a licensed realtor is a little bit more legit. So, I may want to select one of these better suggestions. Now, I might be typing something like Imperial Beach Realtor. 
and there is no suggestion for that. I would not go with a job title that doesn't exist there because then people perhaps are not searching for that job title. They might not find you. So I would think about using one of the suggestions that exist. <clears throat> Company. If you have not created a company on LinkedIn, this won't quite work for you. But if I work for, I don't know, Remax, it's going to show up there and say, okay, Remax exists. I can select Remax. So when people are searching for LinkedIn or on Google, uh, license realtors at Remax. Well, that's what's in my profile. It could help me get found. If I'm trying to set up John Smith. Golden State Realty, that doesn't exist yet. I'm going to set it up for the first time. I would not put my company here yet unless it exists. On the next screens I'll show you. We can create our company so it's part of the LinkedIn system and then I can add it to my profile. So I would not put it here yet. I don't have that company yet, so I won't I won't put it in. There's lots of industries to choose from if it shows up here. So choose one that works well. I guess they've changed that you do need to put some company there. These, can, these things can be changed at any point, so if uh, any of these apply, I would put those in. There doesn't seem to be like an other. <coughs> I will select, in my case, real estate, and then next. Just like when we set up a Twitter, some of us already had a Twitter, and those of us that didn't, we created an account and it had these sorts of screens and such that you didn't see anymore after you had your Twitter account. You don't see some of these screens un uh, unless you set up an account for the first time. But if you don't, that's okay. Uh, many of these settings can be set after the fact. Here, LinkedIn is asking me, what are you going to use LinkedIn for? Finding a job, building a network, keeping up to date, so forth or I'm not sure yet. So whatever those apply, you may choose. For myself, I will say I'm not sure yet. If I'm creating this for the very first time, it's going to want me to verify my email address, but there's a trick that I can do here. I can bypass this. This is an email I made up. It doesn't exist, but I just wanted to create an account in order to show that process. To bypass this, if I cannot verify my email at the moment, you can actually type the LinkedIn address one more time. If I type LinkedIn again, it should let me bypass that and it'll take me to my main profile. Okay, so let me pause here. Does everyone, has everyone either logged in or created an account? We're going to take a... yes? Not my business account, I think it's stuck. We haven't um, talked about that yet. Okay, I have only that one. So That's fine. Yeah, we haven't talked about the business one yet. Oh, okay. I said, does any, did anyone log in or create an account? But we will create a business account in just a moment. Okay, okay so we we'll take a quick look at the anatomy of the LinkedIn screen um, and then how to best use it. So. Um, here is my home screen, just like a home screen on any other social network. 
like every other social network, there's going to be a spot here where I'm going to see posts. I'm going to see content. Well, I never subscribe to any of these people. Why am I seeing it? Don't take that as, you know, as a as a bad thing. This is useful because I had filled this in and I had put in some keywords, a couple of keywords here and there about real estate. Therefore, it's trying to show me real estate articles. So this is another way to uh, keep up to date with things. Like here is an article yet again about Snapchat might go public soon. Remember we talked previously about some of these social networks are publicly traded companies. You can buy shares in the stock market of some of these networks like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Snapchat is one of the hot ones that is not public yet but they're saying that perhaps they're going to do an IPO soon. Perhaps you'll be able to buy shares in Snapchat. It's worth more than perhaps $25 billion. So... Uh, I have a question. I'm sorry. I'm at that stage up there where it says we're almost there, and I had already put in my regular email address, and then I tried to backspace and do what you had said as far as the shortcut, putting in uh, LinkedIn.com, and that just took me out completely. So I'm at that screen right there. How can I? Uh, well, that's if you're at this screen, this what we want. Well, that's what we want. Well, but it's not letting me go any further because it still wants my address in there. Any further than. Okay. See, it says I can't continue. I can't do anything. Well, I, we're not doing. We're not, I can't do that either. Well, what I was going to say is that I put in my regular. I'm not that. I want to be working. Okay, well, you'll need to log out, and then you'll have a different... Okay, start over. Well, that seems like what you want. You want to use a different email address. Wait, so wait, wait, don't, don't do it, don't do it. If, we're, if I'm okay with what I've done, then that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so from this home screen, is also the spot where I can share updates. Now, this is the personal one. Again, we're going to talk about the business one in a moment to see, again, which is more valuable to you. But if this were my personal one, here's a spot where I can share an update, upload a photo, write an article. So I have some, uh, some different abilities to share items. This is going to be on my personal one. I'm going to assume, in my case, yes, the personal profile will be valuable to me. I'm a realtor. I want Victor the realtor to get famous and get clients, but I also want the John Smith Golden Realty Company to also get famous and get clients. So in my case, it would be, it would be useful. And sharing an update is adding some text or a picture or a link. Who can see it? Again, this is stuff that's very similar to the other networks. What's a little different here is write an article. <clears throat> Just not loading up on mine, but that's like their newer blog posting platform. So different kinds of content that I can share on LinkedIn. It's going to maybe suggest who can you log in, who, who you already know on LinkedIn. Share your email address. This is optional, just like every other network. But as I said previously, do you want to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? Uh, I personally recommend no, because they're your friends and family. Are they going to buy your product again and again and again? Are they going to want to see the advertising again and again and again? Most likely not. So we are going to want to connect with new customers and such. But if you want to share your address book, it will tell you, oh, Janet also has a LinkedIn. Why not connect? Well, Janet's industry is completely different than my industry, so why would we connect? Just because we're friends, that's what Facebook is for, not LinkedIn. <laughs> On the top then, if you hover over, we have these different menu items. If you hover over profile, uh, we have edit profile, who has viewed your profile, your updates and such. Hover over and click edit profile. If this is relatively new, it's going to ask you to fill in all of these sections, a little bit of branding with a background image, your photo. 
So again, assuming that a personal LinkedIn profile will be useful to me, I will fill this in as much as possible. I will, on here it, it tells you the size, that's useful. A 1400 by 425 pixel sized picture as my background image works well for a little bit of branding. Say LinkedIn profile um, background photo fourteen hundred by four twenty five. So you'll have to use some sort of graphics software to create an image that size. It goes at the top and um, you can have pictures of your products, of the business, of yourself, your team members, any bit of branding. But the point of this again from the other days is if you want to be legitimate, if you want to be taken seriously, you want your profile fully set up for more people to find you or connect with you. We've got that personal photo. It doesn't seem to say a size, but 512 by 512 is a good size. But it's a square. Just like every other network we've seen, here's another proportionally sized image. Whether it be a circle, or a rectangle, or a rounded rectangle, it's there's no there's no portrait or landscape sized uh, graphics on these. They're all a little square. <coughs> on LinkedIn, unfortunately, it's not that obvious at times. What can you do? As in, I want to change the name of I, I misspelled my name, I misspelled my company, I want to change these things. It's not that obvious that you can do that. If you hover over, that's when you might get the icons about you can change this, you can change that. So if you hover over, you'll be able to change those. And the reason I'm saying that is, at the moment, my LinkedIn address is linkedin.com slash in slash john.smith dash seven eight gibberish. If you've already set up your LinkedIn before, you know, a year or three ago, and you never edited your address, you have that gibberish address. It's not obvious how to change it unless you hover over. There's a little gear right there. So if you still have your LinkedIn personal address that is not very readable, I would recommend that we can hover over and edit it. So if I click on the gear, on the right side, your public profile, and there's a pencil there. So if this is a, an account that you've created that you want to use it legitimately, you might want to put in a real name there. You saw earlier mine was LinkedIn slash in slash Victor Campos. So no other person can claim Victor Campos all over the world. I took that name already. Someone else will have to be Victor, you know, J. Campos, or Victor Campos II, or something else. So that's where you can edit that. It's not so obvious. Question for you. Mm -hmm. Do we need to have the hyphen in between first and last name, or just no. run it all together? I would run it all together, because then you have to tell people, visit me on LinkedIn.com slash Victor dash Campos, and they're going to say, how do you spell dash? Not available. You might have to use a middle name. <laughs> or maybe. Let's see, what are the limitations here? Your, your address can contain 5 to 30. Do not use spaces, symbols, or special characters. So only letters. I cannot put like a... Oh, I guess I can put numbers. Put a number in it, but not dots or dashes, really, I guess. 
from this screen I can also edit some of these aspects of the profile. Let's say you don't want to use the LinkedIn personal account at all. You just want the business. Well, here is the spot where you would say, my public is vis my profile is visible to no one. If you're not going to use the LinkedIn personal account, you perhaps want to make it private. And that's how you make it private. You just turn on that first that first box there. Or if you want to make it public, here's what you can or cannot share. It will show at least the basic information of your profile, which is this up here about a name and a basic location and such. And if you don't want to show off your current position, your past position, or a headline, so at least it's going to say like that, John Smith, San Diego, real estate. The last item here, your public profile badge, this is to create an icon to put on your website. So I'm going to look at that briefly. It is a little bit of technical setup. We can't quite do it in the class, not everyone has a website, but this is asking uh, to copy this line of code and paste it into your website. And then you can choose what kind of these designs do I want. So I can put one of these icons on my website. It's a little bit of copying and pasting of a, of a bit of code to your website. If you don't know how to do that, we could talk about it one-on-one -on -one perhaps in the break. Or if you have someone that built your website for you, you need to get them this information. You need to send them this information, copy this code and copy the other code and send it to them. But this could be useful because then you could have your LinkedIn profile right on your website. And what people will see there is view my profile. You can have it then show your particular um, you know, industry and all of that, all of that good stuff. So that's optional. Could you just say where, because I do have a website, I don't want you to tell me how, but where you would put it on the website, you put it yeah. on a page or a post? Or exactly, if you've got a WordPress website, you uh, can put it in a page or a post on the home page, in the footer. It's depending okay. on your theme and such, okay. wherever you can put it. Okay, thank you. So this is hidden. In my case, I, I found it over under Edit Profile. I'm sure you get to it in other ways, but I found it under Edit Profile by editing the address. Let's go back to Edit Profile screen. In my case, it's also making more suggestions. Put your picture. This, uh, this picture for a personal one, I will give some suggestions here about a personal picture. I didn't really give suggestions for other networks because um, there's no wrong answer on the other networks. But on LinkedIn, it's not that it's wrong, but here's my suggestions for uh, personal profile picture. Good lighting. A shot, a, you know, head and shoulder shot. Meaning, don't take a photo of your full body and then put it in that spot because it'll shrink it down so much you won't be able to see anything. So you want, you know, shoulders up, a bust shot, something up over here with good lighting. Good lighting sounds obvious, but it's very hard to do. If I was going to take a photo to add to my LinkedIn right now and I'm taking a photo of myself right now, this is not going to be this is not going to turn out as a good photo because technically here there's very bad lighting. Uh, our eyes fool us a lot because we are able to see a room and we see it's nice and bright and there's light and all of that but the camera even the best cameras are dumber than our eyes and therefore we come out in pictures worse than we think many times and the big secret is good lighting so if I turn on the light of this column which I have turned off so that it doesn't blind the screen that would be better lighting 
If I stand near a window where there's outside ambient lighting and take a photo there, that could be good lighting. Uh, taking a good photo is a little more complex than just you know holding it up and doing a nice selfie that I've practiced a long time. <laughs> there's the background. If I'm taking a photo of myself right here and I'm not thinking about it, that's going to be in my photo. That's going to be distracting and not professional. If I stand a little bit more here, maybe where it's a little more empty, I might take a photo there, although that might confuse the sensor with such a bright white background. So taking a photo is a little complex. Social media examiner, you can search at social media examiner for the keyword LinkedIn. It's kind of hidden, but there's a little search box. And this will give you all of these articles about LinkedIn. And again, five LinkedIn marketing tips, seven ways to stand out with LinkedIn, seven ways to improve your LinkedIn company page. So if I don't cover every aspect of LinkedIn, Social Media Examiner has articles upon articles about LinkedIn. You just have to search. Instead of scrolling and maybe coming across it, on the Social Media Examiner homepage, there is a search box. You can search LinkedIn. I'm going to put a profile picture, decide the shape of it, whatever, uh, fill in all this information. On mine it says, beginner, I've barely filled in any information. As much as possible, I want to fill in all the information to get that bar higher and higher. And that is by putting my name, my photo, my experience in education. Again, it's a resume. Think about if someone were going to hire you, what are the things they want to know? Education, job experience, but also under view more, there are things that are not in, a, in the standard resume. Volunteer experience, different languages that you speak, that could be very valuable. I'm trying to get a job as a realtor, but I speak Spanish and Portuguese, so I can find people uh, in those languages. I can get found by people searching those languages. Am I part of an organization? The people that I know there might be valuable for me to get more clients. Honors, courses, patents, projects. This is to show what I'm working on. So in the example of me personally as a web design person, I put there the various projects we're working on to show, okay, he says he knows about web design, it shows here, here are the 10 websites he's worked on, I can go look at them and say, okay, he knows what he's talking about, perhaps I'll reach out to him, perhaps I'll hire him. Any certifications, those are always good. What sort of personal info do you want to put out? How do you want people to contact you? In a section about articles, do you want to write articles? P write a post to increase your visibility and improve your professional brand. This is for the topic of blogging, which is a class I teach later in the semester. But writing blogs, writing articles, that's creating content. Whereas social media, I would call it the short form blog. These other kinds are the long form blog. So we'll say social media, WordPress. LinkedIn. This is short form blogging. WordPress, LinkedIn, long form. Both are examples of content. And content is what will get you found by people and search engines, Word, uh, Google, Bing, etc. But people also, people that might hire me. So I teach a class. It's coming later in the semester, in um, two months or something. I'm going to be teaching a blogging class and uh, advice on that.
and that's constant to help you get found. So I can kind of tell you the general aspect of the profile. You then need to f fill in your content, um, whatever makes sense for you. That's the general idea of the edit my profile. Any questions on that before we move on? All right, we can go to profile. Who's viewed your profile? So here you can see who has uh, looked at your profile and such. Pretty self-explanatory. Your updates, if you've posted things, if you've made changes to your profile, it'll all show up here. So you can keep track of what you've shared. How can I share the email? Because I, my first account, I open that in Spanish. It's going to be somewhere in, if you hover your mouse over your icon on the top right, you will see settings. Where did they put settings? There's a settings screen somewhere. Oh, yes. Okay, that one was easy. Okay, there's language. Okay, so this was our profile section. If you hover over my network, here we have connections, add contacts, people you may know, and find alumni. Again, uh, all of this is in terms of how is this useful to you? Why would I collect, connect with that alumni? Yes, we used to go to some really cool parties in college, but now how are they valuable to me? So under connection, under my network, you would see connections, those that you've connected with and chosen to connect with. Um, you can import more connections, add connections, remove connections. Add contact. So if you connect your Gmail address book or your Yahoo Mail address book or Hotmail, whatever, if you connect these other networks, face, uh, LinkedIn will scan it and say, oh, Bill is also on LinkedIn. Would you like to send a request to connect? And it'll do so only do that if it's going to be valuable to connect. So not your friends and family, probably. They are already connecting with you on Facebook or something, so keep them there. You can look at the other connection, the other network items on your own. What is the actual downside of connecting? Annoyance. Because you're going to be, they're going to be following you on LinkedIn, perhaps, and then you're going to be posting, as we've talked about the other days, I'm going to be sharing, you know, I'm using all these networks to share my products. I'm talking about my company. I'm talking about getting sales and all of that. Do my friends and family need to see that constantly? I'm using these networks more as that marketing tool. I'm going to be basically putting commercials in front of my friends and family over and over. They may mind, they may not, so... It's up, it's up to you. I personally don't think that's very useful. Other people in my own company say, no, it is, because that could give you connections to other connectors. I think there is some truth to that. I personally don't subscribe to that very much, because we talk about tactics to get other clients, not off of our own personal connections. Let's take a quick look here. Under Learning, if you click Learning, that opens a new window. And that goes over off to the their um, their course offerings. Now they might have changed this very recently. Let me just confirm something here. Okay, so under under LinkedIn Learning, uh, learn something new today. Join for one month and learn the most in-demand business. Start my free month. Okay, this is a free trial to start off with. So if I want to learn about basic programming or becoming a developer, 
graphic design. Okay, these are the number of views and all of that. Uh, so there's these various courses that I could get into, one month free trial. But then after that, it uh, goes on to $24.99 a month. Now, it looks like they very recently changed this. But this is based on lynda.com. How many of you have heard of lynda.com before? If you have not, lynda.com is a very famous uh, website and series of books, when they were books, about learning concepts of web design, graphic design, marketing, public speaking, so many topics. LinkedIn, Linda dot com, Linda with a Y. They've been around at least 20 years in, in this world of web design. Uh, they have a free trial of like seven days or something, but then it's $30 a month. I've used Linda.com for like 10 years. It's a great website to keep up to date with so many topics with from professional people that teach you all of this stuff. About a year ago or so, LinkedIn bought Linda.com. They paid probably like a billion dollars, literally, a billion dollars to buy lynda.com. So when I taught this social media class just a few months ago, when we clicked on the learning link, it still had the lynda.com branding. It seems now that they're integrating it more, that this is LinkedIn learning, but that's still lynda.com content. I don't know if that eventually lynda.com itself will be shut down, and you'll only be able to get it through... LinkedIn. That's uh, twenty four ninety nine a month. Exactly. Yeah. Same price. I thought you said you were thirty a month. Uh, no, I, I think I said okay. thirty day trial. Uh, from LinkedIn, you get the one month thirty day trial, um, but then it is a normal price of that <coughs> or so. What's that? Uh, yeah, about a year, less than two years, definitely. But I'm thinking about a year. I believe so. I don't believe they've shut that down. That was very popular to get a student discount. I think they're still doing that. So this might not be valuable to a lot of people, but there's a lot of great content there, not just about how to make a website and such. It's about <coughs> marketing. It's about social media. You're going to get lessons in here about Twitter and all of that. Yes, it costs money, but quality education often does. Yes? How much do you student the student discount, I think, is like $19 or less. It might even be $9.99. It might be $9.99 or $19, something like that. So it is $10 or $20 cheaper than the normal price of about $24. So that's the whole learning system. Going back to the main LinkedIn, there's jobs. LinkedIn has the ability for you to search open jobs and for you to post jobs. Let's say I am this realty company. I want to hire more realtors. I can use LinkedIn to find people. Every uh, aspect just like other websites there's the free aspect and then there's the paid aspect so you will be able to use some of these things totally for free but then there is also the premium version of LinkedIn I don't know the price at the moment but it's not that expensive I think in the grand scheme of things oh sorry about that Did that kind of break it? Up above, yeah. So someone probably walked out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there are free and there are paid aspects of uh, LinkedIn. There's the LinkedIn Premium because you will be able to to search for some jobs and you'll get contact information. And then there's the premium ones where you can um, get more, you know, more services. And on a different screen is the part where we will be able to put a job listing. 
Again, there's a free and there's a paid version. But maybe I'm looking for an intern for my company. Maybe I'm looking for, you know, a beginning entry-level employee. This is one of many places out there where I can go find people to, to hire. Um, that's going to be over on the business services when we get to that. But this one here about jobs is that me, I'm trying to get a job, or I'm trying to reach a company to get hired. We have then interests. This is the big secret right here. Interests, companies. This is where you create your company account. Let's take a quick look at this. Hover over interests, click companies. And then there's one very special way to do it. Can anyone figure it out? <coughs> Create a company. All right. So uh, we won't go through this too much in detail. It's pretty straightforward, uh, but it's going to ask you for a company name. Here's the stumbling block that always happens. Okay, I want to create a company. And here's the screen how to do it. And I click Create. But here's where people suddenly stumble. Your email address at the company. It will not let me... Let's say I'm going to create the company. John's... Uh, what did I call this thing? John's Golden State Realty. Realtors. Okay, I'm creating a company. Now it says put in the email. So if I then type in you know, John's Golden Realty at gmail.com, it will not let me. That's not your company. Your company is not Gmail. You have a free email from Gmail. It won't work with Yahoo. It won't work with Outlook. It won't work, work with Live. It won't work with any of these free emails. It wants something like John at John's Golden Realty.com. It wants your website address. This is not free. Hotmail is free, Gmail is free, Yahoo Mail is free, Cox Mail, all of that's free. Therefore, they don't allow it because spammers can create a free email address and set up an account on LinkedIn and spam more people. You have to go off to some company, and I'll mention an example in a moment. You have to go off to one of these service providers and buy <coughs> a real email address. And that's much more legitimate also than being johnsrealty at gmail.com. That's not professional. Sales at johnsrealty.com, that's professional. Help at victorsbakery.biz, that's professional. You know, um, CEO at victorwebdesign.biz, that's professional. And that's what LinkedIn is going to want. So you, you, if you don't have a real email address, you won't be able to create a company on LinkedIn. Let's make some notes here. To create a company on LinkedIn, you need a company email address. You buy a company email address from a service provider. How much do you have to pay the uh, email of your company? That's what, I'm about, that's what I'm about to talk about. Oh, you don't know yet? No, that's what I'm about to tell you in just a moment. So, examples of providers. GoDaddy.com, Bluehost.com, uh, One and One.com, Hostmonster.com. I mentioned these, and there's many more, of course. But I mentioned these. These are the ones that I've personally worked with in my company. These are the ones that I have direct experience. There's probably 20 more that everyone can tell me. I don't know if they're good or bad. If you've used them and they've worked well, they're good. But these are ones that I've worked with for myself or clients, and they, uh, they work well. What these providers often provide you with or sell you, what they sell you? They sell you email, 
I sell you domain name. I sell you hosting. Email obviously is a professional email address. You know, something like sales at victor.com. They sell you a domain name, which is your web address, victor.com. And hosting. This is a, you know, the easy way to say it is where you upload your content of your website. So this is the, the server. It's where you're going to upload the pictures for your products of your website. Is where you're. It's where you're going to install your WordPress website on the hosting. It's where you're going to put the videos of your products on your website. So all of these providers will sell you all of these and it's usually better to buy it as a package. You can buy only the email from one of these and it's going to be something like you know twelve dollars a year. And you can buy the domain name for another you know twelve or fifteen dollars a year. And then you're going to buy the hosting for another fifty dollars a year. It's usually going to be better to put it all together and usually the price, usual prices for the whole bundle, um, usually from around fifty to a hundred dollars per year. If you do them all, if you want to do only the only the email, well, that's going to be you know ten, twelve, fifteen dollars. These prices always change. Maybe right now Bluehost is having a deal and they will sell you email for $9. I don't know. I haven't checked today. But all of these are going to provide you with different products and services and tech support and features. But often you're going to be spending about $50 to $100 per year. And yes, there are some versions that are even cheaper. And you can get some of these things for free. But what's that old saying? You get what you pay for. So if you buy or get into one of these really cheap, affordable, I should say affordable companies, then you're probably going to get cheap results, which might not be the best. That's usually what's, what you're going to look at. So anyone can create a LinkedIn business page, but the big idea is that you need a company address. They used to let you create one with a Hotmail, but then the spammers came in droves, and now you need a professional email. So, you know, let's say somewhere in the middle, $75 for your piece of the internet. You'll have your email, you'll have a domain name, a web address, and a website. $75 a year. It's the cost of doing business. And I cannot provide you any tax information, but I can say personally, these some of these things are business expenses that you can write off and such during your taxes. Tax time. Talk to your tax preparer. I'm not one, so don't take my advice. But that's something to ask your tax preparer. Can I write this business expense off? So this is where I would do it. I can't go further than this. I cannot go further than this because I don't have a real email address to show you with. We're going to take a break in a moment because then you have to fill this in. You have to verify. It'll confirm and continue. And then you'll be able to set up a profile like the, like the personal one with a picture and biography and products and all of that. And that's things we've looked at before. Things we've looked at with this profile and LinkedIn and all of the networks we've looked at previously. But the big secret was that under interests, which doesn't make sense to me, it's there. Companies. Your company is under your interests. You'll be able to create multiple ones, manage them, open them up here, put more managers and such. It's under interests. We're going to take a break, then we'll look at these other sections of LinkedIn, other advice and such. Let's do our break, and then we'll, I'll go ahead and do that. So it's 11.52. We will take a break until 12.02, and then we'll go on.